Hi, my name is Britt Allison, and I'm going to be talking today about the NetApp support, which is a new uh, platform for IntelliMagic Vision as of 8.10. We've got quite a bit to cover, and I don't want to spend an enormous amount of time in the video, so I'm going to be going quite quickly. If you like what you see and you'd like to see more, maybe with your data, just give us a call or send us an email at support at IntelliMagic.com, and, and we can make that happen. So uh, in the hardware platform viewpoint under NetApp, we have a whole new set of reports. Uh, I'm going to cover the dashboard first. So the first dashboard is the um, FAS disk storage system dashboard. And it has a couple things in it. It's got total operations, average processor utilization, and disk busy. I see in the case of the second controller that I have some processor utilization. So I'm going to drill down to the time charts over time. And this is going to take me to the next level of detail. And it, it's going to show me the metrics over time. And I do see that both the average processor utilization and the disk busy and the latency and throughput, and all those things are corresponding pretty closely. And we do see during these kind of peak periods at night that uh, the processor utilization is above 50% for a significant portion. So I'm going to go ahead and drill down uh, on this controller to the processors within the controller by clicking on the line. And this is going to show me the different processors. There's four processors. One of the processors is a little bit busier than the rest. So just by clicking on that processor, processor three, we're going to find additional information uh, particularly information about what the processor is doing. And if we just kind of ignore the idle time, which is the, the, the most um, frequently used bucket, we do have quite a bit of the time is in this waffle exempt. So that's where most of the time is being spent. The fast dashboard allows you to see processor, disk utilization, and for the disk utilization, I'll give you an example of that. We can drill down on the one that had a warning or a yellow in the disk busy and that brings us to a series of charts. Um, the disk busy chart is, is showing a pretty high rating and it's based on the RAID group statistics. If I drill down on that, those were averages for the whole system, I'm going to get to the next level and it actually shows me that most of the business is for the aggregate too. So I can drill down on aggregate two to the plex and there's only one plex. I can drill down to the raid groups and see that these raid groups for this aggregate two are, are quite busy above 50% of the time for most of the time period. And there's really not much you can do except consider lowering the workload on those aggregates if you're not happy with the front end latency. We also have a protocol view of the health across the NFS, SIFS, uh, iSCSI, and fiber channel um, latency. So I'm going to just drill down on the SIFS latency. Actually, I'm going to drill down on the FCP latency. And I can see not a whole lot of SIFS operations. I do have some fiber channel operations and some fiber channel latency uh, being shown. And if I was interested in going further with this, I can just click on the chart and I can go down to my aggregates, vFilers, FlexVols. Why don't I just go um, down to the aggregates here. We can see if there's one aggregate that has worse response time than the others. And then we can actually, you know, see that aggregate one has the worst response time. If we drill down on aggregate one, we're going to, to get to a, a lower level. And there's all my volumes here. So you can see real quickly how I was able to identify potential issues and then drill down to find out where those um, issues are manifesting themselves. And in some cases, if you're looking at the busy disk, um, we can talk about root cause. The benefit of that is you can quickly identify your issues if you have any and provide immediate feedback and then drill down and see you know, what's causing those issues. This was just a real quick tutorial covering only the NetApp dashboards. I'm going to have a few other demos where I look at some of the other NetApp features.